Do you know anyone with dysmenorrhea? That is painful menstrual period. If you want to find out more about this, continue watching this video. We are going to talk about the causes and treatments and how to manage it. Kindly subscribe. Thank you. Time with Dr. Adams. Hi there. Welcome to another episode of Time with Dr. Adams. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all the likes and the comments. Please, if you are new here, please subscribe. In this episode, we are going to talk about dysmenorrhea. It simply means chronic or cyclical menstrual pain. Basically, we have two types of dysmenorrhea. There is primary dysmenorrhea and then we have secondary dysmenorrhea. Let's start with primary dysmenorrhea. It is when a woman has chronic or cyclical menstrual pain in the absence of pelvic pathology. It means this woman has chronic menstrual pain, but there is no disease in her pelvis. Okay, this usually happens to women between the ages of 16 and 25 years. Why do they have this primary dysmenorrhea? It's because they have overproduction of prostaglandins. Prostaglandins are hormone-like substances. This will stimulate the contraction of the myometrium and that will cause pain. So in primary dysmenorrhea, there is no pathology in the pelvis. However, they just have overproduction of the prostaglandin. Okay, so how do we treat uh, primary dysmenorrhea? We use what we call NSAIDs. NSAIDs are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. If you have a friend or you know someone who actually goes uh, with just paracetamol when they are in their menstrual period, that is just cramps. Cramps is okay. It can be uh, it can be dealt with with just paracetamol, some exercising, and healthy living. However, this menorrhea needs an NSAID. You need a medication that will help you. Not just NSAIDs. We have other medications as well. But the basic is the NSAIDs. For example, is brufen or ibuprofen. We have diclofenac. A lot of people take uh, gemidol. It's also a diclofenac, and it is an NSAID. We also have hormonal therapy. However, please, you do not go to the drugstore or the pharmacy and buy these hormones over the counter. No. Please, please let your doctor prescribe it for you because we do not want you to play with your hormones. Okay, so that is primary dysmenorrhea. Let's move on to secondary dysmenorrhea. Secondary dysmenorrhea is when a woman has chronic or cyclical menstrual pain. But the difference is this person has a pelvic pathology. This person has an underlying cause and the underlying cause is pelvic pathology. For example, the most common ones we see are endometriosis, uh, adenomyosis, fibroids, P PIDs, and just name a few. So that's the main difference between primary dysmenorrhea and secondary dysmenorrhea. Primary dysmenorrhea, pain, chronic menstrual pain with no pelvic pathology, and secondary dysmenorrhea is chronic menstrual pain with pelvic uh, pathology. Also, one of the main differences is that with the secondary dysmenorrhea, the pain keeps increasing as they grow and they have other severe symptoms as well. Now, when you go to the hospital, that is where it's best for you to be diagnosed. There are a series of questions that they are going to ask you. The doctor is going to ask you questions, uh, describe the pain. Does it come with any associated uh, symptoms? Some people, when they're in their menses, they get bloated, they vomit, they have uh, diarrhea, they have headaches. I even had a friend who always gets a puffy face when she is in her menses. So all these questions we are going to ask. The doctor can even go further ahead to do a pelvic examination. They are going to ask also about family history because if your mother or someone in your family had endometriosis, there could be um, hereditary evidence there. So they are going to ask about uh, family history as well. And they will ask you what medications you use, you usually use in relieving yourself of this pain. Remember I said primary dysmenorrhea will basically use NSAIDs. That's the brufen and the diclofenax. But when it comes to the secondary dysmenorrhea, the brufen and the diclofenax, the NSAIDs might help a bit, but it doesn't solve all the issues because it has 
an underlying cause which is a pelvic pathology so until you treat or you manage that pelvic pathology that person will not be relieved of their pain when they are in their menstrual cycle okay so now let's move on to how we can manage our dysmenorrhea we start with food healthy lifestyle eat a well-balanced diet eat lot 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 of vegetables um all the greeny greeny vegetables you see um we also encourage people to eat foods that contain magnesium pot potassium sorry potassium you can find it in bananas yes some people can be relieved when they eat just eat bananas potassium uh, magnesium calcium iron uh vitamin b6 you can find it in most of the healthy foods chai uh, seeds have um, some of these elements I've spoken about, you can eat it at home in an over-soaked uh, yogurt or milk. So then you can also have chia seeds, uh, which is rich in omega-3. This is how chia seeds look. What I do is I pre-soak them overnight. The chia seeds in the yogurt, I put it in the fridge and eat it the following day. It has lots of omega-3. Then you can also have bananas, which is rich in potassium and vitamin B6. Very good for relaxation of the muscles. Exercising. Any form of exercising is also good for you. Um, we've already spoken about NSAIDs, hormonal therapy. Please go to the hospital before you take this hormonal therapy. Just make sure that your doctor prescribed it for you. Medications for dysmenorrhea can be oral. Examples of oral medications are brufen, um, that's brufen, diclofenac, uh, naclofen, and then we have suppositories as well. These are put in the anus. Yes, you put it in the rectum, you put it right there. It helps a lot with the pain. We have sub uh, para, we have suppository, diclofenac, and then as well, we have these menstrual heat patches. You put it on your lower abdomen and it just, the other medications, it will just release heat to help with the pain. This is an example of this patch. This is a hot water bottle that you can use when you are having this menorrhea. It's a bottle that you pour water inside. This is just a covering. Sometimes it's sold just like this. Others are sold together with this covering. So you boil water and then you open here and you put it inside. You put this on your abdomen and it's, it's because it's hot water inside, you will feel the heat around your pelvic area and this is going to relax the muscle and help with blood flow and it's going to help very much together with whichever medication you are taking. You can get this in most pharmacies. All you need to do is to ask for the hot water bottle. It comes empty, so you have to fill it. It's very good for this menorrhea. Thank you. Let me know in the comment section below the medications you use during your dysmenorrhea or during your painful menstrual period. Thank you for watching. Kindly subscribe. If there's any topic you want me to cover, please leave it in the comments below. Thank you. Bye.